Stokert here and I'm going to show you how to bench test an Atari power brick. All Atari power bricks will test the same way for pins 1 through 9. Where they all differ at is in the monitor voltages. The raster monitor voltages are different from the monitor voltages for a black and white vector. They're also different for a color vector. Other than that, all Atari power bricks are the same, and they test the same way. This really ugly power brick that we're going to use is out of an Asteroids. So it's a black and white vector, and uh, we'll just give it a go and see what we can do with it. The first thing that you need is you need power, and power is going to come into this plug here. The next thing you'll need is you'll need some way to turn this thing on and off. That's going to be controlled at P2 or J2, I should say. It's actually J2. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. One, you can you can buy a six position Molex .093 from any Radio Shack uh, mail connector and you can jumper pin 1 to pin 4 and pin 2 to pin 5 and that'll give you power as soon as it'll act as your on off switch um, I'm not a big fan of that I've done it it works the better way to go is to take your 6 pin and wire it into some form of a switch and I like to use a safety interlock because they're easy to move rather than a uh, standard on off switch which they can be kind of stiff all you're gonna do is plug this little guy in to J2 and that's your new on off switch and it'll be considered P2 the pinout on these things I've drawn and I'm not the world's greatest artist and of course you can see the big mess on my test bench that's because I've been fixing so much stuff for so many people lately that I just I barely have enough room to work and the numbering for the um, J2 is just as you see it in my little drawing there in purple there's no connection at position 3 or position 6 there's nothing needed at either one of those connections right next to it is is what I've drawn out for J5 and P5 would be your your wiring connection there every one of these Atari power bricks is wired the same uh, for pins 1 through 9 pins 1 through 9 are going to give you all of your voltages to your audio regulator board that's your 10.6 volts uh, unregulated, your ground, your 36 volts, and your heater voltage of 6.1 volts. This is going to vary a little bit from game to game uh, as far as the schematics go because some of them say 6.3 volts, some of them say 6.1, in the 10.6 sometimes it says 10.3, it really doesn't matter because it's all unregulated voltage and it's it's going to be either it's going to be right on or it's going to be off some um, we'll see what we get when we plug it in and fire it up and this uh, this particular scat I think uh, was for quantum I which is a color vector I really don't know don't care it doesn't matter the, the voltages that, that we're going to be testing, it's all the same, whether it's a color vector, a black and white vector, a color raster, it's all the same. Can't emphasize that enough. So you take your power, just plug in your power into the side, and I probably won't be able to do this one-handed, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Got power plugged in and now we just pull our little switch and we've got power to this thing turn your meter on 
Now I've got a, an auto sensing fluke. Your grounds are pin four and five. And let's see, I like to use pin five. Oops, pointing in the wrong direction. I like to use pin five. When you go into test point one, I'm not sure I can't get it stuck. One handed really sucks. What you see on the meter is you see 13.99 volts DC. And that's that's very common to, to see upwards of uh, 14, 15 volts because it is unregulated. Then you go into test point number two. Same thing. Number three, the same thing. And you can use whichever ground you want to use, whether you want to use four or five. For testing the, th the 36 volts AC, you need to shift your meter over to AC, obviously. You don't want to use ground when you're testing this AC or what you're going to end up with. And I'm going to show you just, just for fun, because on pins, you want to test pin six and pin seven, and you'll get your 36 volts AC. If you take either pin 6 or pin 7 and you take it to ground you're going to get a reading of approximately half which is 18 volts. This is a big place where a lot of people make their mistake. They'll, they'll try and read this to ground and they get half and they panic and they go oh my god I don't have 36 volts. Well you don't have 36 volts because you didn't take the reading right. So 6 to 7 is where you want to read it to get your 36 volts AC. And as you can see, it's a little high at 30, 37 and a half. It's acceptable and within tolerance. Next reading you're going to take is 8 to 9. Pin 8 is always the dead center pin on these J5s. And if I can get it in there... You've got 7.13 volts AC, where it calls for, where the scat calls for 6.1. This is within range. It's within tolerance. It's good to go. I'm not going to show you any of the monitor voltages because the, the, those are where you're going to have your differences, and you need to follow your scat as to which game you're actually working on, whether it's a black and white vector, a color vector, color raster. The scat for the game will tell you which pins to read, and they're going to be AC. Your voltage gets regulated on your audio regulator. If need be, I'll make one of those videos, and we'll do something dumb there. Hope this helps.